My God. Come on, stand to your feet. Amen. If you're not standing already, come on, stand up on your feet. Amen. I do honor the Lord Jesus Christ. It's been a wonderful day. I looked over at Elder Hill, Mary Type, and I told her, I said, hey, we done had church. I can go home now. Amen. We done praise the Lord. That's what we come to do, praise, right? Amen. Praise God. But we don't want to leave without hearing what the Father has to say. Amen. We do honor the Lord Jesus Christ as first in our life. We thank God for the man of God. We're going to give up to Pastor Darrell. Thank God for him. Amen. We want to thank God for our elders, AP, amen, and to our mothers. Amen. We want to thank God for Lottie Dottie and tell somebody that means you. Amen. You're special. Amen. You are special, and we thank God for you, you, and you. Let's make this word declaration real big. Repeat after me. Say it like you mean it. Say it like it is alive in your life. Say it like the fruit of it is the manifestation of what you receive as you declare it out of your mouth. The Bible said you shall declare a thing and it shall what? It shall come to pass. It shall be established. Amen. Come on. Praise the Lord. Come on. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Therefore, I boldly confess, my mind is alert, my heart is receptive, my faith is growing, and I'm changing as a result of hearing God's word. So then, faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Please remain standing. You sound great as usual. We're going to visit one verse, just one verse today, just one verse on this resurrected Sunday. We thank God that we get to commemorate, amen, his getting up. If you want to commemorate, celebrate anything, I think this is the day, come on, that we should be able to celebrate and commemorate what changed our lives. Getting saved is better than finding the wife or the husband, come on somebody, buying a new car, new house, amen, making years of investment, come on, because when you make the investment of your life, Amen. God will help you make the investments of your life. Oh, I said something right there. Amen. When you make the investment of your life, God will help you make the investments in your life. Amen. So the greatest decision that you can ever make, and don't let nobody change your mind, is receiving Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen. So the verse we're going to visit today is John chapter 12. We got two translations Amen, that we're going to visit, praise God, John chapter 12, verse 32. The elementary of the translation is the easy uh, version of it. Amen, John chapter 12, 32. I like the elementary elements of this verse. Matter of fact, I like the whole ESV translation. <laughs> praise God. Amen, we're going to visit to the ESV and the KJV. Praise God. And it is John chapter 12, verse 32. Oh, my. Verse 32. Some um, translate, even in New Living Translation, sometimes these translations be off. Even in the King James, they be off. Come on, y'all. Amen. Because how many know the or original uh, language is Aramaic, and we pull from the Greek and the Hebrew? Come on, somebody. And so sometimes these translations get off. And so, I, yeah, yeah. And that comes from studying and knowing. But I like this translation, John chapter 12, verse 32. It said, and I. When I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. The King James Version says it loud and proud. And when the King James Version says, and if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. Amen. If I be lifted up from the earth, We'll draw all men unto me. The word of the Lord is blessed. Father, we do thank you and we do honor you for your word. And we thank you for it even now in Jesus' name. I want to lean in on a testimony and message. A testimony, because it's your testimony, and it's a message. So I want to lean into it. Come on, say it after me. Say it, he drew, he drew me. <laughs> say it again, he drew me. Is that your testimony? Come on, somebody. Is that your testimony? 
Yeah, I said I want to lean on the testimony and the message. So that's your testimony. That's my testimony. So I just want to just talk quietly. Well, not quietly because I got a big mouth. I want to talk briefly on the message he drew me. For unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them. But the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith that heard it. Are you ready to hear what the Father has to say unto us this morning. If you do, say amen and take his seat. Amen. amen. I just feel like you got married. Like, would you take this man to be, okay, this woman. Praise the Lord. Good to see you, Lavelle. Amen. God is good. Tell your neighbor he drew me. Yeah, the good news is that the Father is still drawing people unto himself. And the thing about it, God is still drawing people unto himself, but how many know there's still a vast majority of people that are not answering? Yeah, the good news is that when God called you and drew you unto him, one day you decided to answer that call. Because the truth be told, and we should always tell the truth, Lord have mercy. When God called you the first time and he was drawing you the first time, second, the third, you didn't answer. Come on, somebody. He drew, it took, it took several times for us to really accept the draw that God had on our life. Amen. When, listen, when I begin to study, and I know better, I know not to look into a dictionary, a Webster or a collegiate or otherwise to define scripture. Now, I know better than that, okay? Because you cannot put carnal in kingdom. And you cannot put the expression of a Western culture on the mindset of a Palestinian uh, culture. However, in my mind, I looked at the English word because I'm American. I looked at the English word draw, D-R-A-W, and drew, D-R-E-W. And in the basic form of defining, uh, defining the word in my mind, draw means to produce a picture to make something appear that does not exist. If you have pen and paper, that means you can draw what don't exist on paper, but what draws or, or exists in your mind. And so, Drew is the past tense, or boy's name, uh, but it's the past tense of the word draw. In other words, the word drew is the full manifestation of the expression of the word draw. In our situational text, in this verse that lands on a prophetic promise that Jesus told his disciples that was going to happen, um, someone had came to Jesus, came looking for Jesus. If you know the story, in verse number 22, someone had came uh, looking for Jesus, and, and they wanted to meet Jesus. But Jesus tells them, this so I can hear myself. I think I need some ears. Jesus tells them, there you go, now the time has come for the Son of Man to enter into his glory. And that word glory in the Greek means doxazo, doxazo, which translates properly to ascribe weight by recognizing real substance or recognizing the value. It means valuing him for who he is. Y'all going to get it. It's time for Jesus to do, and it's time for Jesus to be. It's time for Jesus to do what he came to do on the earth. And it's time for him to be that sacrificial lamb in demonstration because he was already slain, the Bible says, in Revelations 13 and 8. He was slain from the foundation of the world. And because God sits outside of time and shows us in time what he already has done. Jesus explains to his disciples a bigger picture. In verse number 24, he tells them, I tell you the truth. And he says unto them, unless a kernel, a kernel of wheat is planted into the soil and die, it remains alone. He tells them, but if it die, but if it dies, it will produce uh, new kernels, a uh, plentiful harvest uh, for new lives to come. In other words, he said, except a kernel of wheat 
falls into the ground and die. Your King James Version said it abides alone. It's by itself. He says, but if I put it in the, if the, if the kernel is put into the ground and it's buried, then it can bear much fruit. Jesus is explaining to his disciples that in death, life comes. That anything that goes into the soil and bury produces something. That's if it didn't die, it couldn't multiply. The only way a seed can multiply, it has to die. <laughs> I'm reminded of the message that Elder Laisa preached a while back. I won't get into it. Amen. Praise God. But many of you are afraid of letting go of pain that binds you. You've been buried. Oh, Lord, have mercy. There are people who has threw dirt on you. They threw dirt on you. They counted you out. They wrote you off. They left you for dead. They expected you to die when they left, when they left you. <laughs> they expected that since we're going to break up, you ain't going to be no good because I'm the best thing that's ever happened to you. Somebody say the devil is a lie. They expected you to die from a diagnosis that you got. Come on. Doctors give diagnosis, and they don't expect for people to get well. Come on. They say you're going to be on this for the what? Rest of your life. Somebody, how many know the devil is a liar? They expect you to die from broken relationship. They, they expect you to die from the hell that broke loose in your home. They expect you to die from the hell that broke loose in your life, from what you're going through, from what you, am I talking to anybody, what you've been through. They expected you to die when they drug your name in the dirt. They thought what they said about you was going to hurt you. Come on, somebody. But little did they know. That the dirt of pain and the dirt of heartbreaking and the dirt of disappointment and the dirt of frustration became a garden and not a grave. Lord have mercy. And the difference between a garden and a grave is what you put in the soil. Lord have mercy. It depends on how you handle the soil of your life. Many people will count you out. That's why you can't tell everybody your business. When you go through things, you got to be careful who you allow into your circle when you're going through. You got to be careful who you allow to attach themselves to when you are in one of the greatest and desperate moments of your life. Even in some cases, when you have celebratory moments, you have to be careful who you allow into your life because jealous people will show up. Come on. And they will show up with daggers to put in your back. And while you celebrating, they cutting. Come on, somebody. Amen. You have to be careful who you allow in your inner court. They came to Jesus, and they was asking Jesus, there's some people that want to see you. And Jesus knew his time. And Jesus was saying to them, listen, I know they want to come see me, but I'm on a mission. I'm on assignment. And except a corner wheat fall into the ground and die, it's going to be alone. But I've got to die in order for, come on, some, something to happen in the earth. And Jesus said, those who love their lives will lose it. And those who care nothing for their lives in this world will keep it for it. Did y'all hear me? He said, if you care nothing about your life in this world. In other words, he was saying, if you're willing to exchange your life for mine. If you're willing to put me first, if you're willing to do that, Jesus said, anyone who wants to serve me and must follow me because my servants must be where I am. And the Father will honor everyone who served me, who served God in here. As long as you serve God, God will honor you. Isn't that beautiful? See, y'all trying to get folk on your job to honor you. You don't even know the president don't want to know it. My God, hallelujah. You don't know people that are in big wigs around the institution and some of these places that you are. And y'all trying to get attention of man. And you forgot that the king of kings and the Lord of lords, my God, as long as you serve him, his father will honor you. If you want honor, you want to get it from God. Come on, somebody. You ain't been honored unless God honored you. Lord, have mercy, because when God honors you, he opens a door that no man can shut. Come on. He'll cause your enemies to be at peace. He'll make people that don't like you give you. 
Jesus said, if you're going to be my servant, if you follow me, he said that the Father will honor those who serve me. And Jesus tells his disciple what he is experiencing. He says, my soul is deeply troubled. Now, here Jesus is telling his disciples, some of y'all get some stuff going on. Y'all want to act like ain't nothing wrong. What's wrong with you? I'm fine. I'm blessed and highly favored. I'm about to die. You're you about to pass out. Talking about I'm blessed and highly favored. Yeah, you need to find some. Jesus told us. He said, listen, he said, my soul is deeply troubled. He said, I'm having experience. When you're going through something, you need to get with somebody that can help you. Jesus opened up his mouth. He said, listen, he said, he said, my soul is deeply troubled. Have you ever had a troubled soul? And he said, he said, but should I pray? Father, save me from the hour, from this hour. But this is the very reason why I came. You can be going through what you're going through, but God is the one that orders your footsteps. And, and even in those hard moments, in those difficult spots in your life, when you feel like, Lord, this is ridiculous. I'm tired of going through this. How much longer am I going to have to deal with this? How much longer am I going to be in this situation? How much longer am I going to have to face this? And even in those moments that we are up against things and things are up against us, we want to say, God, how much longer get this thing off of me? Should you not drink of the cup? Should you not go through what you've been designed through to go through? Because God knows that when you go through what you go through, you come out stronger. You come out more determined. Come on. Just think about the last time you went through that situation that you thought was going to take you out. That last situation where you thought you was going to die. That last situation where you thought it was over. Come on, somebody. But it's because you endured. It's because you were willing to walk through it. It's because you persevered. It's because you decided that I'm going to walk this thing out. You came out. And the Bible said when you come out, you come out wanting nothing. You're just glad you're out. You're just glad that you overcame. Come on. And then you have the nerve to look back and say, I'm glad I went through that. Because if I went, had not gone through that, I wouldn't be who I am today. If I didn't go through that, I wouldn't have the testimony that I have today. It's because of that I am who I am today. And that's how trials work to the believer. Come on, somebody. Jesus said... I came for this reason. Jesus had to explain to his disciples about the importance of dying. Moreover, the importance of his death. He knew that his time was upon him. And he knew why he had came to the earth. He, did, he knew what he must have to go through despite how he felt. Jesus still remained focused. Can you remain focused while you're going through? Lord, have mercy. What you're going through, it's like, Lord, I just want it off. I just, I just, come on. It's like getting mud off your feet. I just want, I just want it off. I just want to get out of this. Amen. And he said, listen, Father, bring glory to your name. I remember telling um, Lisa Huey, is one of my little sisters. She's a Caucasian girl, love of the life. Good God. And she wanted to go somewhere, and, and she had told her job. Almost like, I'm just name dropping. Y'all don't know her. But anyway, uh, <laughs> she had told her job, I want to I wanna go on this trip. She had told him like 90 days. She wanted to go put her paperwork in. Every month she's asking, trying to get it. Because, you know, people are shady. And so when it came up, she said, I want to go. And she said, now all of a sudden, I can't go because other people at work. I said, listen, let me tell you something. We are not going to be a victim, I need y'all to get this, of somebody else's mismanagement and planning and somebody else's undermining and under scheming. Whenever you have something it is, I'm going somewhere with this, that you want to go and something you need to do and you have to go to people to get permission, like on your job, I told her, I said, if this don't bring glory to God, I declare in Jesus' name that this demon will not stop your time from going. I declare, if they're trying to consume it upon their own lust and try to make a spectacle or do something crazy that's not of God, it just recently happened, I said, I declare 
that you'll be able to go, that the angels of God will rescue your time and you will get the permission to go on this trip that you need to go to and you know that it's God's will. She said, well, it's looking bad. They told me I couldn't go. I said, if it don't bring glory to God. Somebody say, if it don't bring glory to God. I don't want it in my life. And I told her, I said, if, glory, if God can't be glorified in this situation, then I declare in Jesus' name, it will not hold to you, and you'll be able to go on your trip. How about the day before she texted me and said, they told me I can go. Y'all play too much. Y'all play too much. See, you got to know who you are. Jesus said, Father, bring glory to your name. Lord, have mercy. Do you understand what glory is? Most people, the glory is the weight of who God is. Come on, somebody. Glory is the weight of his authority in the earth. Woo, Lord, you just, just saying a bunch of words, just saying a bunch of nomenclatures, just pushing out some adjectives and verbs and don't even know. No, 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 no. That's why it's good to bring God's glory in on your situation. You bring the weight of his authority in. Jesus said, Father, bring glory to your name. Then a voice from heaven saying, I have already brought glory to my name, and also I will do it again. But the thing about it, the Bible said that when the voice heard it, some thought it was thunder. <laughs> and others declared that it was an angel that spoke to Jesus. But Jesus told them, the voice was for your benefit, not for mine. Sometime when God is speaking, no, all the time when God is speaking, it's for our benefit. When God is saying something, we got to know that it is God speaking. And it's not just the pastor, the elder, or whoever up here just running off at the mouth. You got to know that God is giving you a word in your season for your season. And the Bible says that Jesus told them, this voice was for your benefit, not mine. The time for judging this world has come when Satan, the ruler of this world, should be cast out. And as I had forementioned, the purpose of Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection was for redemption, to bring man back into an alignment with God. And he said, and when I am lifted up from the earth, I will draw everyone to myself. Now, John 6 and 44 says, no man, no one can come unto me unless the Father who sent me draws him, and I'll raise him up on the last day. In other words, you can't be saved if God ain't drawing. Which says to me, a lot of people trying to work on folk to get folks saved that God is not drawing. Everybody don't want him. Some people have already made a pact with the devil. Some people have already decided they don't want Jesus. And that's why folk going backflips, flipping over walls. If God don't draw you, you can't be saved. So the blessing is, if you feel God tugging on your heart saying, come, that's him drawing you. And he's not going to always be drawing man. Come on, somebody. But the hour, he said, the day you hear my voice, harden not your heart. Come on, somebody. Open up and let me in. John 6 and 37 says, and all that the Father gives me will come to me. And whoever comes to me, he said, I ain't going to cast you out. He said, if, you, if the Father gives you me, you'll come to me. And some people say, well, God already knows who's going to be saved. He does, but he doesn't control it. He's an all-knowing God, but he will not control that. That control is in your hand. That's where that free moral agent comes in alignment. Yes, God knows everything. There's nothing hidden from me. But when he pours out his spirit upon, upon all flesh, he gives that person the draw. The Bible said he came to Jezebel, and she refused to receive him. She gave, he gave space for Jezebel to repent, but the Bible says she repented not. So he gives everybody opportunity. Yes, he knows everything. So when people... You know, the Calvinistic, Aramadian, they always try to, these different views, they always try to make it seem like God knows who's going to be saved and he choose people and serve. No, no, no. God loved the world that he gave Jesus. That's right. He loves the world. He wants everybody. He said, all souls are mine. Come on. And the soul that sins shall what? It'll die. Right. He's saying, all souls are mine. Everybody, la di da and everybody belong to me. I give them opportunity to repent. If they don't repent, that's on them. It ain't because I didn't choose them. It's because they didn't choose me. That's good. That's good. That's good. 
That's why everybody is a creation of God and not everyone is a child of God. If you be led by the Spirit, then are you the sons of God. You're only a son if you're led by. Come on, somebody. You can't be a son or a daughter. Y'all worried about being daughters. Come on, men got to be brides. Come on, ain't no male and female in God. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Women, somebody, I'm a daughter of God. The Bible said you're a son. Come on, somebody. And then later on, tell the men you're a bride. <laughs> Ain't no male or female. He just used gender preference. And you know who you are. Amen. So God, God draws. He draws everybody. And if they choose not to follow, he's not going to make anybody come to him. Amen. So here we get. Again, to John chapter 12, verse 32, and it says, And when I am lifted from the earth, I will draw everyone to myself. Now look at these two verses. Jesus gave two prophetic declarations. Look at this, two prophetic declarations. Number one, he says, When I am lifted up, when I am lifted up, that's prophetic. He said, when I'm lifted up from the earth, that's prophetic. And then the other one say, he says, I will draw everyone to myself. So the prophetic word is, I am lifted. That's exactly what's getting ready to happen. And as soon as he's lifted, he's going to draw. As soon as he is lifted, it is so much in these two verses. Notice Jesus said, when I am lifted. He said, because he knew that he was going to get up. Not King James Version says, if I. No, Jesus knew he was going to be lifted. That's why other translation says, when I am. King James says, if. The if is not contingent because he knew he was going to. Y'all tracking? Amen. So he says, may I suggest that even when you get low, you have to know that you're getting up. He got up, as Elder Mary says, so you can get up. You're not always going to be in a low place. You're not always going to be in a place that you are right now. You're not going to always be doing what you're doing. If you're studying, you're not going to always be in a study mode. You're going to be in a producing mode. Amen. If you're broke, you're not going to always be broke when you apply the principles of what the Father is saying to you. Amen. There is deliverance for you. No matter where you're at, there's deliverance. And when I am lifted from the earth, I'll draw everyone to myself. That's a prophetic declaration that has no ending. Tell you never, since he drew me, I came to lift him. Okay, you need to find another neighbor. Find another neighbor. That, that neighbor might be tired. Come on, that neighbor thinking about their, their dinner. Come on, look at somebody and say, since he drew me, I came to lift him. See, some of you, you're trying to draw your friends. You're trying to draw your relative. Some of you, you're trying to draw your associates. You're trying to draw your neighbors and your spouses. And, and many of you are failing and trying to draw them to Christ because God never asked us to draw men. He asked us to lift him. Come on, somebody. And that's the difference. And you can tell people who are trying to draw people to Christ. Why? Because, come on, they're telling them, you before you come to God, you got to take that off. You can't wear this. You can't come in there with that you got to say this you got to put amen fruit on your head come on somebody you got to take this off you got to wear bobo boots come on my god because they want you to take things off and put things on they give people way too many rules amen before christ and after christ and the word draw in our english language is different from the greek word because the word draw in the english i told y'all means to produce on an image by making lines and making marks Creating something in your own mind. Come on, somebody. It means to trace around a particular image and to copy something seen in the mind or literally seen. Amen. He said, I am going to give you. Listen, listen. He said, I'm going to leave you with that alone. If you draw it out your own mind, you're coming with your own message. And you're coming with your own method. So if you look on that and you're trying to, I'm just trying to draw people. I'm just trying to draw them to Christ. I'm just trying. But you're going by your own thoughts. You're going by your own ways. I'm going to leave that alone. You're going by what you're thinking. Because the way God's draw is different from our draw. Come on, somebody. The word draw in the Greek, I already told you. It means to drag. It means to pull, persuade, 
unsheath. It means to haul. Do you remember when Jesus drew you? You were on his mind. Somebody was bold enough around you to lift him around you. And when they did, God started tugging at your heart. God started pulling at your heart. Y'all, y'all done praise the Lord so that y'all sleeping. Amen. Praise God. Amen. <laughs> I wanted to be like the army say, on your feet. <laughs> My God, it might be too hot up here. Cut that air off. I mean, that heat off. Amen. So when people was around you, y'all, well, I'm the hottest person probably up here. Amen. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. He said, when, if I be lifted up from the earth, he said, I'll draw. Somebody... Praise God long enough around you that their praise got on you. And you felt the conviction of the power of God on your life to say, I want him today. Come on, somebody. Amen. And how many of you? Oh, my God, my God, my God. Do you remember when he drove you? Do you remember when God talked on your heart? Was it on a Monday? Come on, somebody. Was it on a Tuesday revival? Was it on a Wednesday or a Thursday? Was it on a Friday? Or was it on a Sunday when God drew you? How many of you, God, drug you out of some stuff? Amen. Praise God. That word draw means he drug you. How many, somebody knows that God, he pulled you away from some stuff. Amen. When God saved me, he had to pull me from some stuff. Amen. He had to pull me away from some people. Come on, somebody. How many of you, the Holy Spirit persuaded you, amen, to follow Jesus? Amen. He, he's a persuade. That word draw means he persuade. The word draw means he hauled. God hauled some of you out of some things. Come on, somebody. He had to haul you off drugs. Come on. Haul you out of the club. Come on, somebody. He had to pull you away from some alcohol. He had to, come on, somebody. He had to snatch you away from something. That's why the word of the Lord tells us, my God, he said, Listen, I want you to go into the hedges and highways, and I need you to compel men to come. He said, I need you to compel, and that word compel means to take by force. Y'all play too much. Amen. It means like you want to rescue somebody out of a burning house. You want to rescue them out of something that, that will cause them harm or cause them danger. Don't you know hell is dangerous? Amen. It's eternal damnation. Come on, somebody. Amen. Praise God. God pulled us. He, he hauled us. He persuaded us. He drug us out of some things. And now we need to do that also with others by just lifting him. Listen, beloved, you do your job of lifting him, my God, and God will do his job of drawing them. That's why you can't come to church and be quiet. You got to come to church and give God your praise because you don't know who on your row need that praise for a draw. Come on. You don't know who on your row needs that, need that praise, amen, to be persuaded. You don't know who on your row needs that praise to be pulled out of what they are being pulled out of. Jesus has enough oomph in him. He has enough persuasiveness in him to pull, to pull the sinner man, to pull the sinner woman. Amen. He has enough in him to pull the girl, to pull the boy. Come on. Regardless of their state or regardless of their status, if you would just lift him, my God, he'll do the drawing. Jesus has enough power to deal with the crack smoker. Come on, somebody. He has enough power to deal with the prostitute, to deal with those that are drunk. Come on. He knows how to take the drunkness out of the drunker. Come on. And sober them up. He has enough off to deal with the liar, the fornicator, the adulterer, the backbiter, the gossiper, the railer, the thief, the murderer. Come on, somebody. He has enough in him to deal with anybody who is not saved. And we must learn how to be good lifters. And we must learn how to lift him. And God himself will do the drawing. You may ask Pastor Lisa, how do I lift? Beloved, I'm so glad you ask because you lift him by praising 
You lift him by serving and loving. You lift him by your love for others. You lift him by the service that you do for others. Amen. You lift him by witnessing to others, telling them your testimony of how God brought you out. When you start telling people how God brought you out of what he brought you out of, my God, that is enough for people to be persuaded that God is a good God. Come on, somebody. Amen. When you start telling them how God brought you over how God brought you through how God brought you out how God brought you over come on somebody amen as you begin to tell them what God has done for you then God will begin to draw them by your story you got to lift him in your marriage tell him how God how you went through and how God restored you come on somebody you got to tell him, tell him, lift him by your testimony of how God healed your body. You got to tell him, God healed me. Come on, God, the devil, amen, thought he had me, but I got away because God healed me. The doctor told me I was going to be on this, and I had to do this for the rest of my life. Amen. They thought I was going to die, but God rescued me. Come on, somebody. <laughs> Hallelujah. You tell them the testimony of what God has done. Amen. We are more like God when we give. Amen. We lift him by our giving. Amen. The more we give, my God, the more we demonstrate a, a power of God at work in our life. And we lift him again with our praise. When we begin to praise God, we lift him. Amen. I wonder who they sing the song. Help me lift Jesus. Y'all remember that song? I wonder who. Help me lift Jesus. I wonder who. Help me. Yeah. Is there anyone in the house who came to lift him? Is this anybody in the house that came to lift Jesus above your situation? Come on. It's something about lifting Jesus that destroys yokes and change atmospheres. It's something about lifting Jesus that causes joy to permeate the atmosphere. Your neighbor, the person who is sitting by you, around you, those that are sitting near you are depending on you. Yes, you. To live Jesus. You never know how your praise may help somebody get their deliverance. Would you take about 30 good seconds right where you are? I know it's hot. Amen. But there's a place called hell that's hotter than this. Amen. Why don't you take about 30 seconds? Come on. And give God some praise right where you are. Come on. Take about 30 seconds. Come on. And lift it. Come on. Take about 30 seconds. And give God some praise. Take about a 30 good second. Come on. Come on. You got 15 more. Come on. Give him praise. Give him praise. Give him praise. Hallelujah. Somebody by you is depending on you to lift it. Come on and give him glory. Come on. Give him glory. Come on. Give him glory. Give him glory. Somebody is depending on you to praise him. Hallelujah. 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 Come on and give him glory. God, we bless you. Ten more seconds. God, we give you the glory. God, we give you the honor. God, we bless your name. If it had not been for you, who is on my side? Don't know where I be. Don't know where I've been going. But because of your grace, because of you, my God, I can face tomorrow. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Because of you, I can get up out of what I'm in. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Y'all tired already? Glory to God. David said, I bless him at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen. Listen, beloved, I didn't come for agenda. I came to lift Jesus. I didn't come to see y'all look nice and all your kicks, but I didn't come to see your kicks. I came to lift Jesus. I didn't come to draw anybody. I came to lift. Amen. I didn't come to see who was going to be here. Amen. I came to lift Jesus. Amen. I love my church, and I'm going to do anything for my church, but I didn't come for the church. I came to lift him. I came to give him the glory that's due unto him. He said, if I be lifted, when I am lifted up from the earth, 
He said, I'll draw all men unto me. And we know that he was on the cross, and they had nailed him to the cross on the ground. And he was symbolically talking about when they pull me up from the earth, because on the cross, he's laid out on the ground, pent him with the hands and the feet, piercing, amen, feet on the cross. And what they do is they pull the cross. And when they pull the cross, the cross erects. And he said, as soon as I stand erected, I'm going to draw some people unto me. Yeah. Amen. So that's, that's what happened in his life. Yeah, 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 yeah. But we can live on the revelation of that story that never has an ending. That when I lift him in my house, and I lift him on my job, and I lift him everywhere I go, as long as I lift him, he can do the drawing. All I have to do is go be like Paul and tell somebody my testimony of how God brought me out of sin, how God healed my body, how God opened doors, how God restored my life, how God healed my marriage. Come on. How God touched my mind. All I have to do is tell somebody what God has done for me. And if I lift it, come on, somebody. Holy Spirit will draw them. We just have to be better lifters. Amen. We just have to lift Jesus better. If we lift him better, my God, Lord have mercy. If we lift him better, we can hear, he'll start drawing. It don't take much. He just wants us to lift him. And as we lift him, he will do the drawing. Say, so Lord, help me to be a better lifter. Yeah, because he drew me. Is that the cry of your heart? He drew you? Did he draw you? Now he drew, uh, he drew you. Now he wants to draw others. Some of you, you need to go back to your children. You need to go back to your parents. You need to go back to your friends, your co-workers. You don't have to do much. There's so much written in example. Paul, Paul just gave King Agrippa his testimony. He said, let me just tell you what God did for me today. Let me tell you. That baby right there said, I got to praise God because of what he did for my father. And that baby started praising God and a praise broke out because she chose to lift him. She said, I owe God a praise for what he did for my father. Come on, somebody. She lifted him and he began to draw. Come on, y'all. We trying to have folk up in here over half scared to be a witness scared to witness all you got to do is just say let me tell you what God did for me people love to hear stories I remember when I was in the army I go to work on Monday them jokers come in here talking about all the stuff they did on the weekend all the parties all the girls they slept with all the guys they were with and then you go and talk about you too scared to talk about Jesus they gonna tell their stuff I tell mine too I say well, I went to church on Sunday with church Sunday morning, Sunday afternoon, church Sunday evening. And since I saw y'all, I was at church on Friday, because that's when they used to have joy night on Friday night. Yeah. So I went to church on Friday, then I went to church on Saturday, and I had a couple of services. Then I began to tell people about Jesus. And you know what? I listened to their stories, they listened to mine. And it was there where I was able, that's why I kind of miss being in the workforce. Because when I tell people my testimonies, then the next thing I say is, can I pray for you? Can I pray for you? And they say, yeah. Who you want me to pray for? You? You have anybody? Yeah, pray for my mom. Pray for my sister. Pray for my dad. God said, if I be lifted, I'll draw. I was able to minister, I feel God, and witness to so many people because I wasn't trying to lift me. I was lifting him. I ain't got no heaven to hell to put nobody in. And God see all that I do and all that I say. And all I have to do is just say, can I pray for you today? Anything I can pray for you about? It ain't got no long prayer. Father, I just thank you for my friend. Thank you for my co-worker. And I pray your blessings rest upon them. And this request that they have asked of me, I'm lifting it to you. And I ask God that you will solve it, that you would make it good, that you would heal, whatever the situation is. 
and just say in Jesus name amen that's it he drew me he drew you and he did that so that you can go and make disciples of others so that you can draw he can draw others so you can be the one that he uses to draw you lift he'll draw we just have to be better lifters somebody say it real loud he drew me but he didn't draw you just for you alone he drew you so that others can be drawn by you unto him so on this week and this day as we commemorate someone say how was church you turn it and you say what God did for you and you create opportunities and moments where you say father how can I be the one because listen I look at all of y'all it's time for you to lift him and be that witness to the father in the marketplace in your homes y'all fat y'all get fed real good up in here Y'all get fed real. Y'all got enough word to chase hell out of Walmart. Y'all got enough word to cast the devil out the mall. Now it's time to lift him so he can use you so others can be drawn unto him. Don't you want to be used by God? Don't you want to be a better lifter? Don't you want to be the one that wins someone to Christ that God used? to chase hell out of somebody's life, to chase hell out of somebody's home. Let us remember, he said, when I am lifted, I'll do the drawing. When you lift him, he'll use you and he'll draw everybody unto himself. Amen. If you desire prayer, if you need prayer on today, the altar is open for you. If you're saying, I need more of whatever, whatever your prayer need is, your prayer request, if you desire anything from the Father, the altar is open. You can come at this time. Anyone needs prayer? You need prayer? Come on, elders. You need prayer? Come on, elders. Glory to God. Hallelujah. On, let's lift him. Let's lift him. Anyone needs prayer, you can go. You can start praying. Hallelujah. You can start praying. Glory to God. That's right. Pass the oil down to each other. You have someone right here, brother. Glory to God. Pass it down. If I be lifted up, I'll draw. If I be lifted, I'll draw. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus.
be lifted. I'll draw. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Anyone else need prayer? Thank you, Jesus. If you need prayer, make your way to the altar. For whatever reason you need prayer, make your way to the altar. So if I be lifted, if I be lifted, thank you, Jesus. 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 Let him draw you. Let him draw you. Let him draw you. God is drawing in here. He's drawing. And some of you, he said, you already belong to him. But he's still drawing you. He's still drawing you to some places. He's still drawing you to a higher height, a deeper debt. And the Father says, I want to draw you in your time with me. The Father said, I'm still drawing you. I'm drawing you to a place of prayer. Pop, Pop Gary, I hear the Lord saying, I'm drawing you. I'm drawing you closer in this season. Come here, man of God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Even as you walk in, the Lord says that he's walking with you. And the Father says that in this season, he's drawing you closer to him. You desire more of God. And it seems like the Holy Ghost just reminded me that I was supposed to prophesy to you a while back. Look at God. Look at God. Timing is everything but God. The Father says that it seems like every time you try to push further in God, it seems like you still feel some resistance. You're getting some resistance in the spirit. But I want you to know, Pop, that this season is a breakthrough season for you. You're not going to always have some struggles. There's some situations, there's some decisions you're going to have to make. You're going to have to make some decisions with God. Like, God, I'm all in. He know you all in, but you're going to really have to come all the way in. Because God is establishing you. You're growing. Just step on over here. I just come. Yeah, you go. You, God is drawing you. God is drawing you in this season. He's drawing you to a closer relationship with him. In this season, the Father says, take time to just sit by yourself with him. I see you in parks with your Bible. I see you sitting outside with your Bible. I see you sitting in the outdoors with your word, just you and God. And the Lord says that as you begin to sit with him, with the word, he's going to open up the eyes of your understanding. He's going to enlighten you. He's going to give unto you the wisdom, the revelation, and the knowledge of him. The father says that he's debunking some things in your life. Even though the Father has delivered you, you've been delivered. And he says it seems like as shells come off and as he pull layers off of you, the Father said there's other things that's being revealed that you're going, oh man, I forgot about that. Oh, I forgot about that. Oh man, I forgot about that. Man, because the Father says your hunger and your desire for more of him is going to cause everything to be uprooted in your life that's not of him. And the father says he is drawing you. He's literally, I literally see him like a, a, a tug of war, but there is no tug. He's just pulling you closer and closer to him. Think it not strange in this season where people from your past calls you and say, I'm sorry. I repent for what I said. I'm sorry for what I did. 
because God said there were some people that he did not allow you to connect with because they didn't have your best interest in mind. And he allowed the pain because he wanted you to be in a place where you would get full deliverance from what has been plaguing you in your past so that he can bring you to the place and you still not in a place yet but you are coming and as you come into this place you're going to see a supernatural power and a supernatural glory rest upon your life the father says that as you begin to come and, and, and it's not a quick thing because he's taking layers off of you. I see layers coming off of you. I see layers coming off and you're like, well, God, I forgot about that. Oh, yeah, that too. Oh, that because your heart is protected and God, you really love God. It's just that it seemed like it was a whole lot of other things that was mixed in there. But you really love God. But there is a glory and a power and anointing that's been upon your life from a child because you should have been dead but the mere fact that God said he can't die because I see him in his future and I see what I promised him coming to pass in his life God is bringing it to pass and you're not going to always be where you are because God is putting, and I keep hearing the Father saying, it felt like I went away from it, but let me come back. But I heard the Father say, there was times that people did you wrong. And they did you wrong because they didn't know how to handle you. They didn't know how to handle you. And truth be told, you didn't know how to handle yourself. But there's an oil that's upon your life. And you're coming closer in this season. And God is pulling you closer and closer and closer and closer. I see you crying. I see you crying out before the Father. And I see you repenting over the same thing over and over again. God, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I don't know how to break this off of my life. I don't know why I keep end up here. I don't know why I keep doing this, that, and that, and that. And I don't know why. I don't know why this keeps coming up. I don't know why. I repent. I ask you to help me. And I just, I'm right back at it again. But the Father said his choices. Come here, Pastor Darrell. The, the Father says his choices. The Father says his decisions. Put your hand on his back. Both. There you go. There you go. The Father says that his choices and his decisions. But just like Pastor Darrell has his hand on your back. Holy Spirit said goodness and mercy are following goodness and mercy are following you all the days of your life. You're not going to always be there. He's teaching you temperance. He's tempering you. Now you have to make a decision. Before I say something, I'm going to think. I'm going to stop talking first and think later. Now I'm going to stop because everything don't war an answer from you. Everything don't need an answer from you. Every attitude, everything someone say, and, and you really have a, a no-nonsense level. It's like a lot of stuff you just don't stomach well. But the Father would that you be a teacher. And to be a teacher, you can't pick everything that comes or everything that you see. You can't critique it in a moment. You have to step back, allow them to have their moment, and then when Holy Spirit allow you to come in, then you teach. I declare in this season that the wisdom of God falls upon you and show you how to walk circumspectly among those that are around you. That you don't give them the first thing on your mind or the first thing that you think why we're here but you step back and you think before you say stop being body rule and let Holy Spirit rule Holy Spirit will show you how to be strategic can't say nothing here but I'll talk to him later in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus you have a lot of wisdom it's time to bring that wisdom and put it into practice You've seen a lot of things, 
you can help a lot of people. But now, we got to bring that discipline in. And that discipline is in conversation and language. Because you'd be like, but the Bible says not in this season. Because he's literally growing you up in this season. He's fathering you so that you can father. You've missed that portion. And so you've just been running and doing the best you can with the knowledge that you know. But in this season, Holy Spirit is fathering you so that you can father others. Father, I thank you for your son. And I thank you for the work that you have began in him. You're going to perform it and complete it. I thank you, God. Because you have drawn him, he's a better lifter in this season of his life. He will lift you so that others are drawn to you by his life. I thank you for the disciplines of his soul. I thank you for the time that he'll spend with you. I thank you, God, for those moments and those opportunities. And I give you praise and glory for it in advance. And I thank you. And I decree and declare, I declare over his life, better days, better moments, better times in the name of Jesus. And I declare that you are changing the time and the season of his life to bring him in the full manifestation of the thoughts that you are thinking toward him, which are peace and not of evil, to give him an expected end, a bright future, and a hope. I decree and declare blessings in this season. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. I see about a few weeks ago, somebody offended you. And when they offended you, it cut differently because you would have popped them by now. But the Lord said it offended you because you honored the person. You really kind of like, uh, yeah, I thought this cat was, yeah, he ain't no. <laughs> In other words, I'm trying to do better and I keep getting offended. But the Lord says, Learn from the offense. Forgive quickly. Release quickly. So he can heal. Quickly. You almost have to say, I forgive you. That's your way of saying you cut me. But I'm not going to hold it to you. You hear me? So when you're offended, you just say, I forgive you. They may say back, well, I ain't asked you to. It ain't between them and you. It's between you and him. You got it? Be healed. You have some pain. You have pain. A lot of pain. God wants you healed. Come on. Come on. Receive the healing. Receive the healing. Feel a lot of pain. Oh my. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And the thing is, you don't mean to hurt, but you're a hurting man. And hurt people still hurt people. But let God in. Let him in. Let him in. Come out of the mind, say Come out of the mind, Satan. Come out of the mind. Leave him. Hurt people hurt. You don't mean to hurt. It's just your response because you're in pain. You're in pain physically, mentally, emotionally. And the Father wants to heal you today. He got up for that. He died for that pain. Come on. Let him. Come on. Come on. Come on. No, uh uh. No pride. No pride today. No pride today. Come on. Come on. Give it to him. 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 Come on, give it to him. Give it to him. Give it to him. No pride. No pride today. Give it to him. Give it to him. Come on. He's your father. You can you have a right to cry. Come on. Come on. Give it to him. Come on. Give it to him. Give it to him. Give it to him. 
Come on, pop, release it. He's your father. He loves you. He loves you. Come on, release it. Release it. Release it, pop. Release it. Release it. It's okay. Your family. You're at home. You're among those that love you. Come on, give it to him. Pastor Daryl got your back. Come on, give it to him. Release it. Release it. Release it. Let it go. 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 Let it go.
of his people. Somebody shout and give God some praise in the house. Hallelujah. I declare that this is a season of renewing. That God is renewing some things that you have put on the shelf. Some things that you have put on the shelf and you said, ah, I don't want to do it. God is renewing those things, those visions that you said, I'm not going to do it. God is renewing those things. Even some relationships that were wholesome, that were put on the shelf, and they were good relationships. God said he's renewing. Because he drew you. And because he drew you, you're now the lifter. And because of that, God is being glorified in your life. Amen. We're getting ready to go to the house. We're getting ready to go to the house and be dismissed. You're in the hands of Elder here. But what? Come on, give God some praise in this place. We're getting ready to go home. We're going to thank God for like, the word that we've heard on today, that we may take that word that, and hide it in our hearts and that we might not sin against God and that we will apply it to our life on this week, that we will go and tell someone about the Lord Jesus Christ, that we'll be a testimony to them that, they, that we can draw them, that God can draw them to himself and that they may be saved on this week. So come on, let's stand. We thank God for the word. We thank God for the vessel that he used on this morning. Did he do a great job? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. With our hearts, mind, and clear, we're getting ready to go be dismissed from this place, but never from God's presence. Father, we just thank you on today, oh God. We thank you for the word. We thank you for your precious word this morning that we heard, oh God. And Father, as we leave this place, but never your presence, we ask that you dispatch your angels to let them surround us, to undergird us, to cover us, and take us safely to our several different destinations, oh God that when we will arrive to those places, oh God, that all will be well, that there will be peace, oh God. If we left our homes this morning, oh God, and it was in disarray, that, but when we return after hearing your word on today, God, that there will be peace. Now, Father, we're getting ready to partake in the blessed part of this service, oh God. We're getting ready to take communion, which we do here every Sunday. We're going to bless the sacraments. And Father, we thank you for the blood that was shed on Calvary's cross for our sins. Well, if there was no shedding of blood, Father, there would be no remission of sin. But we thank you for Jesus. We thank you for the blood that he shed. And as we partake in the sacrament, so God is symbolic of what he did on Calvary, we say thank you. We take the body of God that was broken, beaten for our sins, for our healing, and we say thank you for it. And Father, we give your name the glory, and we give you honor, and we give you praise. And this we say in Jesus' name. Have a blessed week.